All right, what's poppin' people today? I bring you the NU Swiss Tournament semi-finals series. We've got one versus Elias Sai and Luck of the Irish, and then we got one versus ZS and OBB10. And these were some insane games, especially the first two that we're going to be looking at. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about, a lot to digest, a lot to laugh about. Let's just get right into it. This first game... I see a lot of Pokemon that I really vibe with. Now, this Elias team we've seen before. At least I have. I know this is Rest Talk Ursaring. I know this is a Cacturn. About all I can say about that. <laughs> it's really all I remember knowing about the team. I saw it from Brief and I'm like, it was a Rest Talk, right? And in this team, we've seen before, I think. But it's one of those Stealth Rock Bombardier teams. And Bombardier is kind of cool when you pair it with Conda because you get that little bit of just questioning what set each of those are running because santa conda could be stealth rock and then you've got those utility bombardier sets you've got choice locked bombardier sets and then you've got the flip side of that work just be rocks bombardier and then that unlocks a coil conda and of course that's one of the more dangerous setup sweepers in the format especially with people running terra dragon more and more nowadays not only does that give you a super effective dragon rush to smack appleton with it also gives you Neutral move for Lorantis, it allows you to turn into a dragon type and take no damage from the Leaf Storm. Also, of course, it means you have got a water resistance for if, say, like a Vaporeon comes and tries to revenge kill you, or if, I mean, as there is in this game on Irish's own team, call Witzer. So, as we get into this, we're going to see Scyther lead versus Bombardier, and we're going to see Ir not Irish, Elias immediately switch out, as as we said, having both Conda and Bombardier on the same team does make it hard to know which Pokemon's are hurting which set. And so it's just safer to switch. Based on this critical hit damage, you know this is a bulkier Bombardier. And you know you don't have to worry about Scarf anymore. So he goes right back into Scyther, predicting the Stealth Rock to be set here. And it just goes for a little bit of chip. I actually just going to stay in, though, because you know you're going to tank whatever hit just fine. So gets the Bombardier's health right back and just keeps trying to layer more and more chip onto the Conda. Potentially for a late game Scyther clean, even Jolteon does appreciate Sandaconda being weakened. Like, yeah, we understand that Jolteon doesn't need Conda weakened for it to do its thing, but it's a lot nicer to have Conda in that KO threshold instead of it being able to always come in, block a Volt Switch, and then not be worried about being KO'd on the following turn. As we see here, Claudius is going to go for Dragon Bolt, and it has to switch here. You do have to be cognizant of the potential Terra Fairy bulk up Ursaring, so he goes immediately into a Santa Conda because that is his best way of offsetting it. And on the predicted rest, he allows Jolteon to get in and just get a little bit of Volt Switch damage immediately. It's just a nice way to at least start weakening them on once again. And so long as Conda's always got the helmet, you can then always pivot it and it back the next turn, try to get a extra chip. And here we do see Mrs. Coil Conda after the Rocks Bombardier was revealed. Um, this Vaporeon's about to go on some little demon mode, though. <laughs> so, it's called Mind Vapo. It's, I think, probably the best set right now. In my experience, whenever I throw a Wish Protect Vaporeon on a team, I'm just not, not really feeling it. It doesn't feel like it does a ton. Um, Shoutouts Terra Fairy. Not Fairy. Terra Flying Vaporeon with Terra Blast, though. That was a... <laughs> that is definitely a set that I've seen at least one time, and it's very unfortunate that I have, but it's actually kind of cool. If you're trying to make Vaporeon less exploitable when you run Wish Tech, you know, you look at Cactur and you look at even Lorantis, I guess, Appleton, Toxicroak, all of those common Pokemon that switch in to your standard Surf, Wish, Protect, Haze sets. <laughs> well, hey, what if I turn into a Flying type and Terra Blast you? <laughs> and it actually has some pretty decent damage rolls, too, if you invest in Special Attack, which I find funny. But Vaporeon Combine's up, and it's about to make some progress. The crit on Bombardier here is pretty good when you just get that one nice and weak and we're gonna see something a little in my view confusing here this turns into a ghost type and i i was trying to figure out why ghost my guess is it's just for neutral coverage it hits all of the grass types that aren't named cacturn for decent damage it means that if there's a water type you still get neutral and yeah i still feel like there's probably a better one like oh, we mentioned terra flying why not that <laughs> but he turns into a ghost type he beats the Lorantis. he does have to switch out for the bombardier but so long as the santa conda exists he can always go to it he can always rest back up 
And yeah, Clawwitzer can come in, but you got the Earth's Ring. He actually doesn't go for rest there, interestingly enough. That's going to come back to bite him a little bit later on, or at least just make this game a lot harder. And we do see Scyther now come in just to pressure the Clawwitzer. Luck always wants to keep this Clawwitzer around because it's the best way of him just making progress and actually threatening the Cacturn and the Earth's Ring. And so he switches, Jolteon takes a million, Nemesis Rotom come in. Shadow Ball, and this is where we see the crit kind of matter too, because, I mean, if you're predicting Shadow Ball ever, it's a lot harder to go Bombardier because you're just going to get two shot from that range. He does get the Roost there, though, and he's going to stay in once again, just you turning on the Scyther. He knows he's never one shot. And now Jolteon gets to make a little bit more progress. Just a little bit of nice little Volt Chip. And a Bombardier will come in now and actually just go for a nice little knock, make this Ursaring less of a problem. No more Violite means Amon shouldn't be tanking random hits as easily. And there's where there's a reveal that this is just rest talk. Now you know it's not a threat to like beat you by setting up. Just gotta make sure you don't let it wall you forever. And fortunately for luck, Elias is allergic to pressing rest when his Pokemon are low. That Earth String goes down to Rocky Helmet Chip. And now we're going to see the hope. And what I mean by... Kind of wasn't too good, I think, to let this get low. And I'll, I'll say this, there's a shot this wasn't even rest. You know, we see the couple say to call Greed and run um, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Stone Edge Glare. And if Vaporeon has one move left, maybe it was Wish Vaporeon still. And then you say, okay, well, I've got a Wish Passer. I can just run both the Rock Coverage and Paralysis Inducing move and say, you know what? I'll just get Wish Passes. But this is what I mean by it was bad, because now look, Scyther is able to tank the hit from Rotom. Trailblaze up, and you don't have a Sandaconda now that was, you know, potentially able to stop this. And that's where we mean the game start getting a little funny. Because <laughs> so, this is going to sword to that, so we're going to see Encore. And I sat here when I was reviewing the game, trying to just get some narrative prepared. I sat here thinking to myself, why the hell did this man Encore? <laughs> And I came to this conclusion. Naturally, he has Uncore, so he doesn't even have Sucker Punch. He went out to Cacturn to feign Sucker Punch. But this also means that this Cacturn has to be a bulky set, right? That's the only explanation that I have, because we have seen so many replays from these tournaments where a Scyther will decide, hey, I switch into Cacturn, only to get hit by Dark Pulse for 60%. So naturally, if you've got Dark Pulse and you're an offensive Cacturn, you just go for it here if you think that they're going to Swords Dance. You've got no reason not to. So what this tells me is this Cacturn just does not have any special attack investment at all. Because if you did, you'd just go for Dark Pulse. <laughs> and we're going to see why that would have made more sense too. Because what's going to happen now is the Scyther's forced to switch. Jolteon comes in. It does get KO'd. I did calcs. This Jolteon had like, it was like a 50-50 whether it could survive the Dark Pulse from a non-invested Cacturn. And then Bombardier will come in, go for a Roost. It's going to do what it can what it can is not do much. He does get some knock chip. In case he had secondary item scarf, you know, gotta knock that. And this is why I mean that this was obviously a terrible misplay if the Cacturn was offensive. Because, yes, he wins a speed tie here. But I'm here to tell you, there was a shot for Irish still to win this game. If he aerial ace the Scyther and wins speed tie, Rotom, it's a damage roll for Shadow Ball to KO. It was about another 50-50. If Scyther tanks that hit, we already know Cactor doesn't have Sucker Punch. He would have just gotten beaten down. Maybe I mean, could it have had Spiky Shield plus Encore plus Dark Pulse with Spikes? I doubt it. That seems like you're really compromising on your overall utility with the Cacturn. And so yeah, I think we come to the conclusion that the Cacturn had to have been bulky and just not had the perfect odds to KO Scyther from that range with Dark Pulse. That, that's all I've got, because otherwise, yeah, that was potentially a really unfortunate throw of the game. And yeah, next game. <laughs> so this team was used actually in NUPL this week, but it was used before the NUPL game that featured it. This Berserker is about to do something very funny turn one. As we can see, we've got the Sandaconda Lycan Rock Core, so it's like Sand Spit Conda. Sandrush Lycan. And of course, you've got Croak plus Lycan as well. Really good to help wear down each other's checks, primarily Conda. 
Um, and yeah, so naturally, we also have Berserker, which does that too, because they both, you know, all of them weak to Conda, the Smunk, and at least get some chip with Iron Head. So naturally what happens turn one is Berserker goes for Steel Beam and one-shots Anaconda. Very normal. Very normal behavior. <laughs> this is a Spec set, not Santaconda, Specs Berserker. And what's really funny is that in the NDPL game that featured Steam, the, <laughs> the Berserker missed <laughs> turn one, or whatever turn it was. I was just sure I missed Steel Beam. The whole point of the set, gone. Got popped by Earthquake. It was very sad. This game, though, very nice. And as we can see where this game is going, <laughs> it's kind of over. Unless luck plays, like, perfectly at this point. Because, wow, what do you have to stop anything on this team? Croak and Lycan both just feast. And, of course, you get the slow pivot into Croak now. Not Croak, Berserker, my bad. Gotta go for a U-turn here just to, just to stunt a little bit. Eel comes right back in. We're going to see Luck just take a little bit of chip, knowing that this is probably just going to U-turn. And also, hey, may as well weaken Eel. As at this point, again, you're looking for potentially a Scyther or Jolteon late game. Eel needs to be weakened for both of those to have their ideal time. Croak comes in, though. And unfortunately, because there's no more Sandakata, this gunk is free. This gunk is coming. And Luck is going to double switch here, predicting a switch out from the Croak. But nope, it stays in. And it's Scarf Tox Crook too, by the way, so he had no reason to switch. I mean, okay, you don't one-shot Scyther, but you know. He Scarf, that matters later. <laughs> anyway, switch is now from the Bombardier. Me, personally, I would've stayed in. But it makes sense to want to switch, because you know the full team. If you're Scarf Croak, you know this is Terra Grass Scyther. It needs to Trailblaze to be faster. You know you can also outspeed the Jolteon and always take it out. Makes sense to want to preserve your Scarf. And I'll let Bombardier take it out for free. And I'm going to just press next turn a couple times. We're just going to see Bombardier and Conda trade. Nothing too exciting. Jolteon comes in after the Bombardier's KO. And again, Lux just doing what he can to set up for Scyther. Because now he's going to tear grass. He's going to Sword Stance up. And you're just going to pray. And this is where he gets the sad reality. <laughs> this was a Scarf Croak the entire time. He does 100 million with CC. And at this point, he is in range of the Lycanroc follow-up. A Celerock. And so, we have one of our NU Swiss finalists, Elias Sai, with a very, very powerful team in Game 2, beating Lux. Repeat. Now we get to our next series. Ornberry Blissey, ZS. And of course, you know, I mean, I gotta, sh gotta show some love for OBB's team. It's Rain. Rain is really fun. I love Rain. Um, the one problem with this team? That's a bear tick. This mod is trash. <laughs> Uh, it's just a very sad Pokemon. Where's my Electrode, man? Need, need the Electrode for the rain. Not the Bear Tick. But it's just a very terrible preview for ZS. I mean, you're looking at rain with a team that lacks any water resist. And so, you know, you look at this. This Santa Conda better be a Terra type that resists water. <laughs> and you better be using your Terra for Santa Conda. Otherwise, doof, dire. Otherwise, I don't know how you're supposed to hold up against Quillfish. Hell, I don't know how you're supposed to hold up against Baratick unless it's Terra Water. Because the month's just going to crash. I've got nothing else to say. Let's get into this. So, NDD, Cloth. Um, ZS just has the biggest cojones ever because this man stays in and psychics the Cloth. He does not care that in doing so, he's allowed Murkrow free entry to set up Rain. Oh, there's a little clap. So, Murkrow sets up its rain, and we don't see a taunt. Naturally, ZS still predicts taunt, because, you know, these, these guys should always have it. Just throws off a seismic. Doesn't really care about the Rotom coming in. He's actually going to make a very, very nice read, too. Get Haunter in and get it a Scarf. And I'm here to tell you, this Haunter with a Scarf? A little scary. Mon out speeds, now Bear Tick under rain, and we actually even just see OBB decide, I don't need my Bear Tick. So as I said, Bear Tick's a terrible Pokemon. OBB realized that too mid-game, so he tossed it. <laughs> so Quillfish comes in, it's got to outspeed Scarf Hunter, we know that. And of course, ZS has to just play the sack game there, because where what Pokemon was taking two Liquidates under rain? I couldn't tell you. So now Conda comes in, this tells you it's Terra Water. He's going to immediately go for it, the Rotom's always going to come in, because he now knows, okay, this is a free Thunder. Um, I probably would have vaulted here, as he does too. <laughs> I said it was a free thunder, because there's another turn where this gets thundered and mixed him up. So yeah, free vaults for the rest of the game. Very nice. 
Merker is always gonna get to come in now. Get up its brain. The unfortunate thing is, Chansey's getting to a point now where he can just T-Wave spam the whole game and have insane profit. Because Chan- you know, Rotom's not gonna trick the Chansey. Sometimes you'll see a Rotom trick once a game, and maybe it gets an item like Helmet or Leftovers, and it'll trick a Chansey later just to get rid of the Aviolite and say, you know, I don't care if this other item is still useful for you, I don't want you to have all that extra bulk. But since you tricked a Haunter earlier and the Haunter was a Violet, that doesn't apply here. And as a result, you can't do that. So this Chansey still is going to sit forever. And yeah, there was the Thunder, by the way. But yeah, you have to let something take a pair. And unfortunately, Quillfish is chosen. And it's kind of just sad now. The Mon's nowhere near as impactful. He's got a Sword Stance up here, though. He's got a Sword Stance up. Connect with a crit gunk shot, I do believe that mattered. Conda is very, very bulky, and although Sword Stance Quillfish is a threat and a half, Conda, Conda bolt comes clutch, man. But at this point, Entity can come in very safely. Very, very safely. He is just going to go for a Psychic again, because he does not care if this Murkrow comes out. You know, what, what's it going to do? Set rain? Okay. <laughs> it's still generally a mod that you can freely switch around anyway, just because it's not running moves that you care about. And based on how he's played it with the Chansey turns, probably figure he's not even taunt. So Murko is basically just giving Chansey free turns to come in, potentially throw off Seismix, throw off T-Waves again, potentially paralyzing, you know, Gold Duck as well. It's just, it's just not a serious Pokemon at this point. We're going to see Terra Water come out. OBB basically saying, hey man, <laughs> can you please give me a couple more KOs? Thanks. He's going to take out... The Scyther there get over half on pass. Mind you, yes. This Mon could one-shot Passimian with a sword stance under right, which is just disgusting. And now the Golducks have come in. It's the only thing that can do anything at this point. Pass U-turn, obviously, you know, that doesn't do much. And under rain, this Golduck is strong. And so he's going to crit Surf. Seeing that there are still odds to win if luck goes his way. But he will not be able to get another. At this point, you just need that toss anyway. Because Passimian will always be able to clean up late. And Golduck, of course. I mean, I don't know. Did we see Golduck take rocks damage? Hold on. Gotta check. Ah, the Golduck was Boots. So I was gonna say the Golduck would die to rocks, but no. That's a Boots duck. But Chansey can come in, and at this point, it's back to full. The Golduck no longer has any boosts. You, you, we do not care. <laughs> this is just always going to be a very safe endgame now for ZS. And he's going to just, I'm just speeding through this because, yeah, I mean, nothing happens on those last few turns. So very well done. ZS goes up 1-0. I was about to say, what happened to my screen? <laughs> then we get this game. Now, OBB has unfortunately brought one of the most standard looking teams ever versus a team looking to capitalize on standard trends. And by that, I mean he has an ice type. And there's a few ways this game can go. It's hard to tell what items are running on what here. This Rotom Frost could be Scarf, it could be Nasty Plod. If it's Scarf here, then I mean Passimian sets up for debate. Scyther sets always up for debate too, because there's a Hatchram, so this could be Scarf Scyther even. Or like a Violite, if you wanted it to have that extra bulk. It's really hard to tell, and that's not really good when you've got a team that potentially gets tabled by <laughs> a lot of Pokemon. Or a lot of, not Pokemon, but a lot of different sets the Rotom could run. And because here's how it works. Either this is like Scarf, and Umbreon just has to hope it can foul play it down, or it's Nasty Plot, and again, you have to hope you're foul playing it down. This T-Wave never goes off, and I'm here to tell you, these Mons like to run sub when they're Nasty Plot. You think Yon's gonna do anything to a substitute? I'm here to tell you that's not how the game works. So, Passimian leads. There's a Rotom lead, so he's going to always protect here, because surely this is just Scarf Passimian, an honorable set. Um, no. No. To I'm here to tell you right now, if you see 27 from a Passimian's knockoff to a Conda, that is banded. This boy is banded. So, you know, banned here, and now you're like, okay, well, Rotom maybe Scarf and in the Scyther's Defog with the hat for extra support? You know, that's kind of where my mind goes at that point. He's going to get the knock of the Umbreon too, so the leftovers there are gone. That just makes it easier for Rotom to take down now, because you don't have to worry about all that extra recovery. And we're going to see Stealth Rock now get set up. Now this is Specs Appleton, so switching around it is never really easy. 
So he just has to predict properly, and he does on that turn get the Vaporeon in. And we're going to see now a wish past the Hatchrim, but unfortunately, we're going to see a nice little double. <laughs> a nice little double into the Appleton, and we're going to see another very nice play by OBB here, predicting Terra Fairy to come out and just Apple Aciding. You know you take a Psychic, fine enough. You may as well just get some chip on this. And now another very talented play. Knowing Scyther comes in, getting Quill in, just trying... Because again, you know that there's this Rotom in the back that's so problematic. you got to get as many predictions right as you can because you want to get the battle swinging in your favor as early as possible. Get as best of odds as you can to win this game because there's one Mon that can shift them in your opponent's favor really quickly. So he also gets Poison Point there. It's really good. And he liquidates an incoming Rotom. You know, also just helpful to prevent Hat from switching in for free. Um... Yeah, so here's the problem. This Rotom does not care. We see Leftover, so now we know it's Nasty Plot. And this Quillfish is going to switch. And this thing goes for a nice little substitute. Oh, my bad. It goes for Plot first. <laughs> Got the order wrong. We Plot early and then we Sub later. My bad. So, this Poseidon comes in, only doing 22, so very obviously Scarf. And then just another nice little switch. This Rotom Frost is about to be maximized. And we see the Rotom Volt there. It does 19, which is kind of high. <laughs> and this thing just throws off a Blizzard knowing there's no Ice Resist on this team to be found that actually wants to take a hit. And now he gets that sub up. Because again, Plot was a big threat. So the Yawn here made sense. But sub coming up because yeah, your Foul Play's not going to break my sub. Nothing on your team can 1v1 me if I get the sub up. So we're going to see some progress made. They call him the Maker of Progress. He's going to boost up. He's going to throw off a Discharge here. Doesn't want to miss. And it's just kind of bad for OBB. Because he has to find a way to break sub while not losing the game on the spot. And the way he opts to do this is go Passimian. He's going to break it with a CC. And we're going to always see the sub scout as well again. Because you may as well see what Pass wants to do. If he U-turns, then well, okay, I get a sub right back up. So Rotom comes in on the Discharge, and as we saw from earlier, the Volt Switch damage means that Hex actually just breaks sub. So this thing is now actually vulnerable. And now Psimian gonna come right back out. And he's actually gonna U-turn here. I remember watching this and going, I bet you he's U-turn, and I stay in and sub again. <laughs> but ZS doesn't care to risk losing, of course, the mod that just seamlessly mops the rest of OBB's build. So he plays it safe, switches out. Scyther comes in now, it CCs on a potential Terra Steel, may as well catch the Appleton if it gets a little greedy, and you two-shot it anyway, so it's not a big deal. And we do see the Appleton just get sacked. My guess, because it's a little slow anyway. No need to go Sandaconda and just let Rotom come, come back in on a turn later for free. And now to see Bipassimian come in, and this is just a very, very easy EQ here. Conda's gonna take a million. The opposing Pesemi would take a million, and of course Quill would get taken out by it. Yeah, I said a million as it did 31. Y'all gotta remember, that is non-stab Earthquake, and this is a Sandaconda. This man is very bulky, so seeing it take 31 from that kind of move is still kind of <laughs> still kind of scary. But yeah, I mean, at this point, ZS has just got the game. Hatchrim walls the rest of this man's team. He goes for a nap, and just like that one battle, I'm going to press next, because this hat just stays. He just, he just stays in front of his team. And so now we officially have our NU Swiss Finals. We've got ZS facing off against Elias Sai. Some people might say that I cannot still win this tournament. I'm here to tell you that I think I've still got pretty good odds of somehow finding a way to win NU Swiss. So, you know, we'll see if I can. I'm not in the tournament, but we'll see if I find a way to still finagle a win. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed this recap. Should get another PS Live coming out within the following days. I've just been you know, enjoying going over some other people's battles. And that's it from me. Hope y'all enjoying your day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.